Hey everybody, welcome and good afternoon. I'm Deborah Shore, I'm the Regional Administrator for US EPA Region 5 and Manager of the Great Lakes National Program Office based in Chicago. I'm delighted to be hosting you at today's event, announcing a multi-million dollar loan agreement between the Environmental Protection Agency and the City of Chicago to help remove lead service lines across the city. Our first speaker today will be a friend of mine, Radhika Fox, who has served as EPA's Assistant Administrator for Water since she was appointed by President Biden in January 2021. Prior to joining EPA, Fox served as the Chief Executive Officer of the U.S. Water Alliance, where she established herself as a widely recognized and respected national thought leader on complex water issues, from equitable water management to investing in our nation's water infrastructure. Her work has helped address the most salient water issues facing the nation, including climate change, affordability, equity, governance, and innovative finance. Radhika, it's a pleasure to welcome you to Region 5 and to Chicago. Um, good afternoon, everybody, and, and thank you so much, Deborah, for that um, lovely uh, introduction. Can I just say, the president got it right when he selected Deborah Shore to be his regional administrator for Region 5. She is such a treasure, and we are so grateful that you're uh, serving here in Region 5, Deborah. Thank you. I also want to thank uh, Senators Duckworth and Durbin. Uh, uh, it's always wonderful to see you, and I want to thank you for your ongoing partnership. Uh, the EPA would not be able to do what we're able to do were it not for your leadership and support. Uh, the Deputy Governor, the Mayor, thank you. It's just so wonderful to be um, here with all of you today. But what I really want to say is I want to thank the workers uh, who are here. My first job in the water sector was working for the water agency in San Francisco. And so they are really the ones that make sure that people's uh, drinking water is safe, that their their wastewater systems are, are working. So could we just first uh, just appreciate them for a moment? So I'm honored uh, to be here this morning on behalf of this afternoon, sorry, the, where is the day going? This uh, afternoon on behalf of the Biden-Harris administration to share in Chicago's uh, uh, um, really celebration of an important moment. As we all know, water is essential to thriving communities, to healthy families, but there are too many uh, people in this country that are water insecure. They question if we turn on the tap, is that water gonna be safe to drink? And, and this is a particular problem when we think about the challenge of having lead in our drinking water systems. There are actually about 9 million lead service lines um, dotting neighborhoods like this all around the country. And in fact, about 400,000 of those lead service lines are right here in Chicago. And we got to get the lead out. That's been a priority for the president. So what we're celebrating today is an EPA WIFI loan totaling $336 million to the city of Chicago. Uh, this is going to help remove 30,000 lead service lines. So it's, it's a huge, huge step in, in getting the lead out. Um, in addition to that, through the bipartisan infrastructure law, this year alone, um, the state of Illinois will have another $200 million to invest, and we certainly hope um, that we can continue on the progress that we'll be able to achieve with this loan. We also know that getting the lead out keeps people working and gets people um, really high quality jobs, and this project alone is going to support about 2,700 jobs right here in the city of Chicago, so there's a lot to celebrate. Um, and, and what I have to say is that there is more to come. Uh, because of President Biden's bipartisan infrastructure law and to Senator Duckworth and Durbin, who were so essential, particularly Senator Duckworth on the water provisions of the bipartisan infrastructure law, um, my office is investing $50 billion in water infrastructure projects all around the country. So more to come, more safe water, more healthy and thriving communities. Um, so thank you all, and I will turn it back to you, Deborah. Thanks, Radhika, and, and I'm pleased now to introduce 
our senior senator, Dick Durbin, and thrilled that he's able to join us today. He has been a leader on environmental issues from day one. He's consistently supported federal funding for clean drinking water and always sought to ensure that the benefits of such legislation flow to the most vulnerable in Illinois communities. Senator Durbin, thank you for being here today. Thank you, Deborah, Mayor, my colleague, Senator Duckworth. It's an honor to be here today and to see money we appropriate in Washington actually coming to the neighborhoods of Chicago. Right. That the taxpaying families of Chicago and Illinois are seeing the benefits of this. Why is it important? Because there is no acceptable level of exposure to lead, period. So we want to get the lead out for sure. Why? Because every family should have the, the confidence and the belief in their minds that they can drink right out of the tap safely. That's something most of us grew up with and didn't think twice about. Now we're thinking about it, aren't we? A lot of people are drinking bottled water. We want families to make sure that all the water flowing into their home is safe. Unfortunately, the lead service lines, which were required in building codes in our state and city not that long ago, those lead service lines are dangerous and have to be, be removed. This equipment here is incredible. I've seen it at work in another town, and I know that the people behind it know that what they're doing professionally. Our bottom line is this. The money in Washington comes home to, to Illinois and Chicago. Taxpayers see that return and their quality of life is better. There's one person in the 100 member United States Senate who has taken this project on as her own, has become a national spokesperson to make sure that this project is successful across not only Illinois but across the nation. And that's my colleague, Senator Tammy Duckworth. Well, thank you, Dick. I uh, learned from the best for my senior senator, and it really is a pleasure to be here. I started working on water infrastructure issues when I was in the House of Representatives, and, I, and the Flint, Michigan water crisis happened when the city of Flint switched their water supply uh, from a municipal water source and trying to save money, they switched it to the Flint River, which was more acidic, and that eroded away the protective coating in all of their water pipes, which allowed the lead to leach into the water. And I remember sitting in committee in the Oversight and Government Reform Committee, um, and I just had my Abigail at the time, and she was about six months old, and I looked across into the audience, and there was a sea of um, everyday ordinary Americans who had ridden buses all the way from Flint, Michigan to Washington, D.C., and they, and way in the back of the room, I couldn't see this woman, but I saw her hand and she was holding up a baby bottle and it was the exact same baby bottle I used for my daughter with the same pink top, but the water in her bottle was brown. And ever since then, I have pledged to make this a core piece of my work in the House and then in the Senate. Uh, I'm so pleased that we got the money under WIFIA. This is going to allow us to uh, uh, be able to fund as much as 39 percent of, um, of the, uh, the funds. And then under the bipartisan uh, infrastructure law, uh, we were able to get my DEWIA bill, which is the Drinking Water and Wastewater Act. That is going to provide up to 51 percent of the uh, dollars that can be used for the local match and that will be loan forgiveness program. So we can get to a place where we can get 100% of the lead service line uh, replaced in Illinois. We contain, in just our state, we have 23% of the entire nation's supply of lead service lines are right here in Illinois, and most of it is in Chicago, in the Chicagoland area. As, um, as Dick uh, mentioned, Senator Durbin mentioned, it was code here until the 80s, which is why we have so much of it, and yet there's no safe amount of lead that should be in our drinking water supply. As part of the bill, we included language in that to make sure that we get out to underserved communities, which are communities of color the most, because those are the ones that are least able to come up with a matching share. Those are the ones that are least able to get the attention and get the work done. Uh, um, I've been watching uh, uh, the city of Newark, New Jersey, replace 100% of their lead service line in three years. I'm very competitive. I know we are so much bigger in Chicago, but I think we can kick Newark's That's butt. Right. Right, Mayor? We can do this. We can do this. Um, uh, and there are lots of great lessons learned from them. And, and I, I want you to know that um, the mayor and I have been talking about this since, I think, election night. Around 
around 9.37. Ever <laughs> <laughs> since election night, we've been talking about this. I'm like, this is your first project in Outer Women Down. You've been talking about this with me as well. Uh, uh, with all of the uh, the folks, um, this is something that we can do. It is long past time that we do it. And I'm so proud that we've gotten this money. Uh, thank you, President Biden, for providing this. There is overall in that bipartisan infrastructure deal, $15 billion for water, $5 billion of it for PFAS, emerging contaminants, $10 billion of it for uh, in the initial tranche for um, replacing lead service line. We're going to make sure as much of it as possible comes to Illinois, as much of it as possible comes to uh, uh, Chicago so that we can replace 100% of our lead service line and get it done as soon as possible. And now it is my pleasure uh, uh, to uh, introduce our mayor who was just in D.C. yesterday talking to uh, a bunch of senators about various issues and to the president. Um, but I'm so pleased that uh, we're able to do this today. And uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you for taking charge of this effort. Thank you so much, Senator Duckworth. And by the way, I'm so impressed with the people of Chicago because only in Chicago is there an official threshold and when you should put on a jacket. And uh, it's about 50-50 right now. Um, thank you, Senator Durbin, for your leadership. Um, Deborah Shore, thank you for your leadership. Um, and I want to acknowledge a couple of people quickly. I'm going to abbreviate my speech for those who did not wear a jacket. Um, Angela Tovar, who is here, who is leading our Department of the Environment, is here. Thank you, Angela, for your leadership. And three of my colleagues, our alders that are here, literally, um, they have the back of the people of the city of Chicago. And, and those are alders Lamont Robinson, Pat Dow, and Greg Mitchell. Could we please acknowledge them? Thank you. So we are grateful to be here in this incredible community. And what a remarkable testament to when all levels of government are working in tandem. So $336 million right here for the people of Chicago on the south side of Chicago. That's an incredible testament to, again, our senators, Tammy Duckworth and Dick Durbin, and their unwavering commitment to garner new resources and support at the federal level to accelerate the progress that is happening in the city of Chicago. I'm also very much grateful that people are recognizing that water is life. And my administration is committed to ensuring that all Chicagoans can safely and affordably access, access this essential resource. And this is why my administration is working hard and certainly excited about accelerating efforts to replace all remaining lead service lines in Chicago. And today's award from the US EPA is a huge boost to that effort. And recognizing that our black and brown communities are already grappling with the disparate environmental and health impacts, we recognize that lead exposure is a compounding factor that must be addressed. And every child in this beautiful city, regardless of their zip code, or their background deserves lead-free water. It is a basic human right for everyone to have access to clean water. And equity must be at the forefront of every single initiative that we do. And we must work to ensure that every person in the city of Chicago and every household that needs a service line replacement has access to the resources that they need to actually get the job done. And thank you for acknowledging the workers today it is so good to be a part of a labor movement that is ultimately providing not just good paying jobs as we work to build towards a blue economy, but jobs that are protected by labor and unions. I also do want to make sure that everyone knows that one of the most beautiful ass assets that the people of Chicago and this entire region has is, is Lake Michigan. It is our main water source. It's one of the finest and cleanest sources of water in the country. And we are so fortunate to have this fresh water resource, and which is why we need to take long lasting actions to ensure that Chicago's water safely reaches every single tap in this city for generations to come. This blue economy that is upon us is certainly something to be excited about. Now I know I speak for everyone here when I say that we want more jobs, a more robust economy that prioritizes our health, our people, while also creating a workforce that creates a pathway to stronger communities. And we are in the midst of this incredible undertaking here. And it's gonna require joint efforts at every single level of government. The replacement of lead service lines is not just a matter of infrastructure. It is a matter of public health, 
justice and equity. I will end by thanking President Joe Biden. His leadership and his administration and his partnerships with the EPA, or partnership, partners with the EPA, has provided historical federal investments to actually get this job done. So we look forward to the continued work and the partnership together to build a better, stronger, safer, and healthier Chicago. Thank you very much. And with that, Deborah Shore. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor Johnson. I want to now introduce Illinois Deputy Governor for Public Safety, Infrastructure, Environment, and Energy, Bria Scudder. As Deputy Governor, she helps manage 10 state agencies, including the Illinois Environmental Protection Agency, and works to implement the administration's top priorities, including the state's Lead Service Line Replacement Notification Act. Thanks for joining us here today, Deputy Governor Scudder. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. Uh, as we've heard, this funding will help address the significant public health crisis facing our state. Illinois has more lead pipes than any other state in the nation, with over 600,000 lead lines. And of course, as we've heard, 400,000 of those are right here in Chicago. It is a top priority for Governor Pritzker to ensure all Illinoisans have access to safe drinking water. And we know that people of color are disproportionately affected by lead service lines. Black and Latin A residents in Illinois are twice as likely as white residents to live in communities with the most lead service lines. Here in Illinois, we know this public health issue needs to be addressed with equity in mind. In 2021, Governor Pritzker signed into law the Lead Service Line Replacement and Notification Act. This made Illinois the third state in the country to ban the harmful practice of partial lead service line replacement and prioritize replacement in areas with high risk populations and establish a statewide low income water assistance program. Illinois EPA has already provided over $100 million to communities across Illinois for lead service line replacement and is gearing up to distribute the first $107 million tranche of funds from President Biden's Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act to additional communities in need. The Pritzker administration was also proud to support the city of Chicago's daycare lead service line replacement program with $4 million in funding last year. And we look forward to continuing our work with the Biden administration, the city of Chicago, and communities across the state to rebuild our water infrastructure and create good paying jobs in Illinois. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Governor. Now I would like to introduce Annalisa Castle, who's the Water Policy Director for Elevate, a national nonprofit organization headquartered in Chicago Elevate works to promote universal access to clean, healthy, safe, and affordable health, power, and water in people's homes and communities, no matter who they are or where they live. Elevate also assists people in removing lead from and improving the indoor air quality in their homes, childcare centers, and environments. Thank you for joining us to celebrate this effort to protect Chicagoans from lead exposure and drinking water. Annalisa, I turn it over to you. Good afternoon. My name is Annalisa Gonzalez Castle, and as you heard, I lead Elevate's water policy work. Um, at Elevate, we prioritize safe, clean, affordable water for all, and that means removing toxic lead pipes from drinking water systems. In addition to advancing policy solutions, Elevate works directly with the city of Chicago with our incredible project managers, construction crews, and problem solvers to prioritize equity in lead service line replacement. We work with child care facilities to test their water for lead, to navigate what can be a complicated replacement process, and to ensure complete lead remediation through the removal of lead fixtures, including inside properties. We meet people where they're at, and we are, pri we are proud to prioritize community needs in our, in our work both to partner with and complement the City of Chicago's Water Department. So we could not be more thrilled or grateful for this $336 million investment by EPA in removing lead from the city's drinking water system. This is critical to protecting children and all Chicagoans from the threat of lead exposure. 
As you've heard, Chicago has more lead drinking water pipes than any other city in the nation. So we have a big job ahead of us. The path forward must include continued alignment of resources with investment from the federal, state, and local levels, building and mobilizing a diverse water workforce in the blue economy, and embracing partnerships across agencies, with NGOs, and business and community leaders to deliver innovative approaches to water infrastructure projects, which we know has the power to transform community relationships to water services and to water itself, our most precious asset. Lastly, I wanted to share that as an expectant mother living in an environmental justice community on Chicago's Southwest side, this issue is deeply personal for me. Safe, clean, affordable water is an essential human need and it is critical to child and maternal health. Every Chicagoan deserves to trust that the water coming from their tap is safe to drink, to cook with, to bathe their children. And every Chicagoan deserves to trust that their local officials will act with urgency, prioritize equity, and engage them with respect and dignity in delivering on the promise of safe, clean, affordable water. So thank you to EPA. Thank you to Mayor Johnson, Senators Duckworth and Durbin for making this possible. To EPA Region 5 Administrator Shore, our MC, and of course, to Assistant Administrator Fox for her steadfast commitment and to coming to Chicago in November. <laughs> and to all the hardworking agency staff, technicians, work crews, taking on the job of achieving lead-free water in Chicago. We are grateful to be in partnership with all of you. Thank you. Let's get to work.